you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, welcome to the podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for coming by. We've got an amazing author on the show. She's launching her next book and uh, some other books we'll be talking about as well there. And so we're going to have her on the show. But as always, you know the drill. Go refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Tell them all to sign up for the show, subscribe to the show. All that good stuff. We certainly appreciate you guys supporting the show in that manner and format. Go to LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, and Goodreads.com, Fortress slash Chris Foss. You can see us all over that, those, those, that, and them places. Today, she is the author of the new book coming out January 24th, 2023, The Twyford Code. Janice Hallett is on the show with us today, and she's been talking about her amazing hot new book that will be coming off the presses. Janice is a former magazine editor, award-winning journalist, and government communications writer. She wrote articles and speeches for, among others, the Cabinet Office, Home Office, and Department for International Development. Her enthusiasm for travel has taken around the world several times, from Madagascar to the Galapagos, Guatemala to Zimbabwe, Japan, Russia, and South Korea. A playwright and screenwriter, she penned the feminist Shakespearean stage comedy, Netherbard and co-wrote the feature film Retreat. She lives in London, is the author of The Appeal and The Twyford Code. Welcome to the show, Janice. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Chris. I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for coming. And it sounds like you're from across the pond, as we like to say in, I don't know, America time. I don't know. Who does say that across the pond? I am. I'm from across the pond. I'm, I live in London, and I am a Londoner. There you go. There you go. And I'm a Yankee from America. And uh, we, we got you guys. We stole the country. <laughs> but we sent an emissary to take back Britain. I think that's uh, as, as the, uh, I think that's the, uh, who are those, uh, the prince and the princess there? Or, oh, well, yes. I think they reneged their titles or how, whatever the proper term is there. It's, it's changing quickly here. It's it uh, yeah, the king and queen. Yeah. Prince, princess. You can't say God save the queen anymore, which no. is unfortunate. No, it's God save and, the king. Uh, I, I, do you guys like him? Is that going to work out? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you could just stick with a prime minister for more than a couple of weeks, we'll be good, right? Oh, you know, we get bored easily, don't we? Just switch them around. You, do. you guys just, just like, oh, let's, let's try another one. Just do that. <laughs> we might, I mean, we're not doing any better over on our end. We might want to, we want, I mean, I like the guy who's in there now. I voted for him, but a little bit prior to that, there was some weird stuff going on that we could have used some turntables on you know i whatever you guys have the ability to say no we're not dealing with you anymore we need more of that over here i suppose <laughs> that's what i'm saying i don't know no. with all of our politicians in fact but the politics aside tell us about the new book or give us your dot com we should probably start with that so we can find you on the interwebs to get to know you better well i don't have a, a website as, t- as such i'm on twitter as that janice hallett and that's where you'll find me a shocking amount of time. Actually, probably when I'm supposed to be working, I am on Twitter. So that's my, that's the place to find me. There you go. There you go. So what motivated you to write this book? And then to my understanding, this is your second book? This is my second book. Yeah. I mean, the Twyford Code is, um, well, it's about a former prisoner who looks into a traumatic event in his past. And he goes back to investigate the disappearance of his English teacher, who he doesn't remember it quite as much as he'd like to. So he has to go back and ask ask his school friends what happened to this teacher that he is sure disappeared. Ah. Uh, So it's a mystery? It's very much a mystery because he he Mm. discovers that this teacher had been obsessed with a cancelled children's writer in the vein of Enid Blyton. Oh, She'd wow. been obsessed with this with this writer and thought she'd been putting codes in her books that are now long forgotten. And Steve himself becomes convinced of the same thing. Mm. So would you say it's a kind of a who done it? 
It yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Is there is there murder involved, or can you tease that out to us? Yeah. There's there's quite a lot. There's quite a bit of murder involved, actually. Jeez. Thinking about it. All right. Yeah. There's it's you yeah, know it's uh, Steve <laughs> discovers quite a lot of stuff going down. There you go. So, what made you choose the the plot of the book and and the arc of it? I don't know. It, it's one of those things that just came to me. I know my first book had been very much an ensemble. The, the appeal has a huge cast of characters, and mm-hmm. I really wanted to get down and get to know one character in my second book. So it's really one character's journey, and that's that's Steve. And I should say that Steve, he's a former prisoner, but he can't read or write. Mm. So he's communicating with us via audio files, and they've been transcribed automatically by hmm. some very quirky software that sometimes misinterprets what he says. So it's kind of, it's told in a strange way as well. I mean, once you're, once you're getting into it, you're, you're into it. But, yeah, it's not a normal narrative by any means. There you go. Probably adds the suspense or the, or the plot or, you know, just thickens everything. 100%, yep. There you go. Now, is that what the Twyford Code is? Can you tell us what that title oh. comes from? I couldn't possibly tell you what the Twyford Code actually is, but I can tell you what it refers to. Edith Twyford is the author, the children's author oh, okay. in, in the book, the Enid Blyton style cancelled author whose old stories sort of retold in, in the book. And we, we get to read some very old fashioned narratives that, that children were reading in the 1940s. So that was, that was fun to write. Mm. So the, this English teacher, Miss Isles, do I have that yes, correct? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, she believed that uh, the code was running through the book of a disgraced author Edith Twyford. Is this kind of like one of those things where people thought if you played uh, Beale's things records backwards, that you know John Lennon was dead or something or whatever? Well, McCartney? you know, there's there's a lot of conspiracy theories and a uh-huh. lot of well, sometimes if you look at them in the cold light of day, they seem strange beliefs, mm-hmm. and yet people do do take take them up and can be um, made to believe them. So Truth yeah. is stranger than fiction. Absolutely. Now, was this was there any characters or any people that carried over from your first book? Not at all. No, they're both uh, the Appeal and the Twyford Code are both standalone stories. Mm-hmm. What what what's an example or a, a tease out of of maybe a scene or scenario that we can let people know? Okay, unfortunate thing with novels, we can't tell what the ending is in the middle part. So <laughs> that's true. So it's kind of hard to um, to to say, isn't it? Let's think. Well, it's mostly a tease out, you know, where you you go. Yeah. Uh, what, or that, or what? What do you think people are going to find most appealing about the story or the characters? I think the character of Steve. He's very. He's a very compelling character because he's not been able to read or write his whole life. He's he's developed a personality that um, compensates for that. Really, he, mm-hmm. he's got all sorts of tricks that will cover up the fact he can't read and he can't write. His favourite one that he goes to is that his glasses are being mended, and so could someone read something for him please mm. so yeah he's a he's a character and he's had a difficult life he comes from a very troubled dysfunctional and poverty ridden background but he's he made his way out of that from a young teenager he was taking steps to get out of that those roots but as we'll see as the book goes on some of those steps really landed him in more trouble hence he's just been released from prison wow man he's going through some interesting things. You even know some new technology that's in here, an old iPhone and, and the voice recordings. Talk to us about how you incorporate yeah. that in the plot. Well, that's the strange thing. That's how he manages to record his voice. He wasn't mm. intending to write down this investigation at all or to record it. He manages, he's got an estranged adult son who gives him an old iPhone 4. That's The technology really is quite ropey in that, but he does manage to get this voice recorder working and that's what what he records he records himself not only telling us about the investigation he records some conversations with people that he has and he finds himself talking into this phone and using it as a confidant Uh. than and so he, he reveals quite a lot about his background about his thoughts and his motivations and we kind of always know what steve's thinking through what mm-hmm. he tells us into into the phone so that phone becomes his his surrogate son really because his son doesn't want him to contact him anymore it sounds kind of interesting how how the whole thing plays out and there's all sorts of different twists and turns and aspects to it uh it certainly is 
Yeah. Was there anybody that you knew or movie stars or people that you had in mind as you wrote it? Or did you pretty much make up the characters as you went along? I tend to make them up as I go along and no, with nobody visually in mind for them. I must say, I don't really think much about how people look, how my characters look. And mm. I don't do a lot of visual description of them. And mm. I think that's because I, I think more of, I inhabit the character as I write. And so I don't, I'm not looking at the character. It's a strange phenomenon when a, a writer writes from the point of view of a character. I felt, while I was writing, I felt I was Steve. And yet we couldn't have been more different. There you go. Now, is this book out? This book is out in over in Europe? It's out in the UK. Yep, okay. certainly. It's got a whole lot of good ratings to it. And I was just like, that's a, it's got a lot of ratings for something that doesn't come out until January 24, 23. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's been coming out, out, coming out in America or... since January. Yeah, my, I'm, I'm about a year behind in the US. So I think we're hopefully we'll catch that up. Oh, well, we're kind of behind over here. <laughs> it's been a weird for a couple of years. It was in a weird, I don't know, decade or something like that. So, uh, you know, there it is. The Sunday Times of London declared it a modern Agatha Christie mystery, and uh, she's constructed a fiendishly clever, maddening. Mandingly original crime novel. No. I I have I can't read or write either. Clearly, I went to public school. Crime <laughs> novel for lovers of word games, puzzles, and stories of redemption. That sounds like quite a lot to put into a book. That's an awful lot, isn't it? Goodness, that sounds like a lot to me. Yeah. <laughs> But it is all in there, I promise. <laughs> lots of puzzles, lots of word games. Does the does the reader kind of find themselves being part of this solver of the mystery? I th yes, we are with Steve every step of the way. So as he discovers this code, as mm -hmm. Miss Isles felt that it it was a code, we we crack it with him, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we will get to the bottom of it. So is Paul McCartney really dead then, or what? Was that <laughs> Beatles thing? No, I'm just <laughs> You're over there. Can you go down to Apple Street and Abbey Road? I'll oh, have yeah. a look around for you. Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul McCartney. What a he, he seems like an incredibly nice guy. I'm sure um, he is. I, I hope he is. I mean, I'd hate to find out that I don't know, he's he's a mean person in private, but he seems like a generally nice guy. Maybe that's why he survived the longest. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's, I don't know why. That's a that's a really awful thing to say. I just slided Ringo Starr without really without realizing it. He okay. he seems like a nice guy too. Yeah. You know. Peace yeah, and love. Around. Peace and love. You know, anybody who says that's probably a nice guy. I would hope yeah. so. Anyway, I don't know why we're doing Beatles jokes, but it just seemed like it felt very Londony. I don't know why. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes we go on rambles on the show. We just gotta just kinda fill in whatever we need to fill in because you know I, that's the big challenge with novels it's it's they're they're wonderful to read they're fun to read but we can't give them away you've got to order the book and read the book the more you want to tease out before we go oh goodness i think I've, I've done so much teasing already that i don't want to tease your, your listeners you know too much there but you yeah, go you gotta to buy go. the book you, know, you gotta read it and you got to solve the puzzles, word games, and everyone loves a story about redemption. That seems to be a classic when it comes to, you know, people, you know, everyone goes through challenges in life. And so they love hearing about stories of redemption. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's definitely a story of redemption. There's, there's hidden things in there as well. If some of your mm. podcast listeners are particularly clever, they mm. might spot some of the Easter eggs in the twilight. Ah. And they might find out Paul McCartney's really dead. Uh, there you go. There's Easter eggs in the book. Wow, that makes it even more interesting. People <laughs> love Easter eggs. I love Easter eggs and all sorts of things. Like when you find it's like finding hidden treasures. You're like, ah. Mm. And there you and go. And you feel you're the only one. Yeah, or you try to be the smart one. You know, I always tell people, order the book before the rest of your book club does so that you can be the first one on the block to read it and say you did. A good um, strategy. I don't know. I, that's the strategy I like. It's it gives you gives you game over everyone else. And then and then if you're really an evil, awful person like I was when my father as a child told me that Santa Claus and, and the Easter Bunny weren't real, and he said, Don't tell your brother. First thing I did was go tell my brother what happened and ruined the pot for him. So don't do that though. Well, that's a commitment to the truth, that. Yeah. Yeah. Just what I was, you're right. I was just being honest and uh, and whatever. But actually, it was being. But don't do that. Don't don't give away the plots, the books. Let other people find out. But just just be able to say you're the first one on the block who did who got to read the book and you know what happens at the end. <laughs> so there you go. Well, Janice, it's been wonderful having the show. We'll look forward to having you back for future books. And uh, give us your dot coms or plugs or wherever you want people to find you on the interwebs. 
Oh, well, thank you, Chris. It's been lovely being here. You can find me on Twitter at Janice Hallett, and that's with two L's and two T's. Or you can also find me on Instagram, at which is at Janice.Hallett, two L's, two T's. There you or go. Or just Google me. You could Google me. Yeah. Order it up and solve the crime of the century per the book. The Twy Ford Code, a novel that comes out January 24th, 2023. Welcome to the year 2023. That's pretty freaking awesome. But now, what, what's up next? 2024? Wow. Where's the time go? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much, Jas, for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. There you go. Thanks, Simon. It's for tuning in. Be sure to go to all the places where you can order the book, where fine books are sold. Go to goodreads.com forward slash Chris Foss. Go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Foss. LinkedIn forward slash Chris Foss and all those crazy places all those kids are playing on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time.